10.1 day one notes on sequences, series, and segmentation. We are going to write the first four terms and we are going to assume that n begins with one. Then we're going to write an expression. Then we're going to define it recursively. And then we're going to go over a little factorial. So those are our four parts. Let's go ahead and start with part one, which is going to be the first four terms in a sequence. So um, let's say that this is the inside cover of your packet. There's a couple of things that we would like to clarify for just 10.1. First of all, regular um, sequences just have A, which is like the answer, sub n, and that's going to be the amount for this sequence. And remember the word, or I'm sorry, the letter n stands for now, like what is happening right now in the sequence. n minus 1 would be previous, and n plus 1 is going to be the next term. So it's a pattern, and n is like first, second, third, fourth, fifth, what's happening in this sequence. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So for this first term here, we have a sub m equals 3n minus 2. So we're going to find the first four terms. I'm going to drop the letter n and just replace with a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4. And remember, the letter n is whatever uh, place you are in the sequence. I'm in the first place of the sequence here, so that's just 3 times 1 minus 2. Here's my second term in the sequence, third term in the sequence, and fourth term in the sequence. Whoops, that should be a 4 right there. And then these are going to be the parts of the sequence. So the sequence is 1, 4, 7, 10. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. So again, here we have a negative one and it's being raised to an exponent this time. We're gonna find the first four. So a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, a sub four. And again, whatever position we are in the sequence, that's what we drop in for the letter N. So this is gonna be three plus a negative one to the first power, three plus a negative one to the second, three plus a negative one to the third, and 3 plus a negative 1 to the fourth. So the answers in this sequence, this sequence first term is going to be 2, then 4, then 2, then 4. So it kind of has a repeating pattern. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this very last one. So remember, n is going to be the input. So we're going to do it four times here, a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4. I'm going to have to kind of write small here. This is going to be a negative 1 to the first power over 2 times 1 minus 1. This is going to be negative 1 to the second power over 2 times 2 minus 1. Negative 1 to the third power over 2 times 3 to the negative 1, and then last, our fourth term. This is going to have a denominator of 2 times 4 over one, uh, minus 1. All right, so our answers in our sequence for our very first one, this is going to simplify just to a negative 1 over 1. So this is going to be just negative 1. This is going to be a fraction of a positive 1 over 3, so let's write 1 third. This is going to be a negative 1 over a 5 down here, so this is a negative 1 fifth. And then our last term is going to be positive, so this is just going to be 1 over 7. And there you have it. Those are the terms in the sequence. So remember, if you just go back to uh, the inside cover, Remember, n is always the input, and that's pretty much going to be the same for everything in this packet. The letter n is going to be the input. a sub m is going to be the answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at part two. 
for part two right here, we know this sequence. We are going to write an expression. And the word expression, remember, it doesn't have an equal sign. So the first thing you do is you find the first difference. And if the first difference is consistent, then we get to stop. So a difference between 1 and 3, that is going to be an increase of 2. A difference, how does 3 turn into 5? That is an increase of 2. How does a 5 turn into a 7? Again, an increase of 2. And we get to stop there because that first difference is going to be the coefficient in front of the letter N. And then from there, we either add or subtract to actually match the first term. So remember, this is like a 2 times a 1. And I'm just going to put a blank right here because we're going to have to adjust our expression. So 2 times 1, of course, is 2. But the first number, the first sequence is a 1. So if I do 2 times 1, which of course is 2, if I do minus 1, that's going to get me here. And I'm just going to spot check for the rest of them. So 2 times 2 minus 1 is 4 minus 1, which is 3. Great. The next one would be 2 times 3 minus 1, which is, of course is 5. So I'm pretty confident in my expression of being 2n minus 1. All right, so let's go to our first different, our inside packet, and let's talk about what's going on here. So the first common difference I'm just going to kind of separate these out we're actually going to have two scenarios here for 10.1 if you have a common difference the first time it is a coefficient and remember it is in front of the letter n so Remember, we had a constant of 2. It is in front of the letter N. And then remember, from there, you have to add or subtract to make it match the sequence. Okay. All right. Let's kind of go ahead and take a look at number 5. So for problem number 5, let's take a look at the difference. How does a negative 2 turn into a 1? That's an increase of 3. How does a 1 turn into a 6? That's an increase of 5, so they're not common. How does a 6 turn into a 13? That's an increase of 7. So if it's not common, then let's see what's happening here. See if this is increasing by a common amount. So how does a 3 turn into a 5, that's an increase of 2. How does a 5 turn into a 7? That's an increase of 2. So when it is a second common difference, the second row right here, that means what is common is an exponent. So we're going to write n, and then we're going to write this common second difference right here. And then again, we're going to have to add or subtract to match the actual sequence. So remember, this is the first term in my sequence. I'm going to drop the letter N and write the first term in my sequence. So 1 squared, of course, is 1, but the first term is a negative 2. So we would have to subtract 3 for this expression to match the first term. Let's check it for the second term. Let's do 2 squared minus 3. 2 squared minus 3 is going to be 1. If I did 3 squared, 3 squared minus 3 is 6. So this is going to be the expression, and it's going to match every single term in the sequence as long as I subtract 3. Now, one more time, how did I know that 2 was an exponent? I know that 2 is an exponent because it was the second difference. Let's go to the inside cover. All right, so remember the first time for problem five, we didn't have a common term. But the second time we found the difference, it is now an exponent. So it is n to whatever that common difference is. And you still have to 
add or subtract to match the sequence. Okay, so that's how you write an expression. Notice I didn't put an equal sign on either one of these. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. So from 2 to 5, I'm sorry, 2 to negative 5, that is going to be a difference of a negative 3. seven and then a negative five all the way up to a positive 15 is I'm sorry a positive 10 is going to be a positive 15 and then a 10 to a negative 17 is going to be negative 27 now let's talk about how crazy and consistent this is when you have alternating signs this is important you ignore the negatives when we're trying to find the pattern. So what we really should have done is just pretend 2, 5, 10, 17. Here we go. 2 to a 5. 2 to a 5 is going to be a 3. 5 to a 10 is going to be a 5. And then 10 to a 17 is going to be a 7. Now, I know I don't have a coefficient because these are not consistent. Let's analyze this difference. 3 to 5 is a positive 2. 5 to 7 is a positive 2. Bingo. We know that 2 is going to be an exponent. However, look how these signs are switching. Let's go ahead and figure out what the exponent is and what we're going to have to add or subtract to to get to the first term. This is the, I'm sorry, to, yeah, to get to the first term. This is the first term. So for the letter N, we're looking at the first term. So remember N is one, one squared is one, but what would you do to get the number two? You would add one. Let's kind of test this for the second term. So let's do the second term Remember, 2 squared is 4, and 4 plus 1 is a positive 5, but that's a negative 5. So, very important, we know that our little pattern is increasing by this amount right here, but I'm going to put a cloud in it, and I'm not going to highlight it as my final answer because I have to address the negatives. Let's go to the inside cover of your pocket. So when they alternate, you are going to have to remember the sign switcher. Very important. Two cases. If the first number is negative, then the sign switcher, you're just going to simply tack on a negative 1 raised to an exponent of the term that you're in. If it is the second term that's negative, which is our case, for example, 6, we are going to tack on negative n raised to the n plus 1. Because remember, it wasn't the first term, it was the next term that was negative. So look, let me show you how this works. We know for sure this is the pattern, but the second term is negative. Alternating terms. So our answer is going to be n squared plus 1, but we're going to multiply it by this sign switcher. So put this right after n squared minus 1. That will get you any term in this sequence. All right, next one. We're, over, we're halfway done. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next term. Write the first four terms of the sequence defined recursively. So recursively is going to be based on the previous term. So if we know a sub 1 is 25, then the next term is going to be 25 minus 5. So the next term, a sub 2, you're going to take the previous term and subtract 5. So we know that's 20. a sub 3 is going to be 20 minus 5, which is 15, 
and A sub 4 is going to be 15 minus 5, which is 10. So this is recursive. So this rule, every time you see anything plus 1, we know it's recursive. So again, over here, if I know A sub 1 is 15, then A sub 2 is going to be the previous term, which is 15. Add 3 to it, there is A sub 2. What about A sub 3? You put that previous term in here, add 3, we get 21, so on and so forth. All right. That's going to be it. I'm going to save factorial for tomorrow. Um, make sure you show me these notes for your uh, credit today. And also remember you do have a homework assignment. It is going to be 10.1 day one and it is going to be problems 15 through 19 and also 51 all the way down to this bottom. We're going to cover this tomorrow. So do not do this bottom half of this homework assignment right here.